All right, guys, welcome back to Musk Mondays. Today we're doing a little bit of an informative session. I mean, they're always kind of informative, but this one's more particular on the L7 and the cords that you're gonna need to operate it and what's available for those cords because we are having trouble getting a circuit that goes to a double C13 in a timely fashion. So we came up with a little bit of solution. We'll illustrate that today. And then we're also gonna talk about the L7's firmware update that was just released on the 16th of February. Really easy to install, guys. Find it on Bitmain's website as well as in the link below. We'll, we'll throw that down there. Uh, but without further ado, we'll jump right into it. I'm just gonna talk about the power cord that you're gonna want for these high consumptive units such as an L7 or an S19. This fixture will work for an S19 as well. Is going to be this NEMA 620P to C13 cord. Now, the reason we're not doing the NEMA 620P to double C13 is because we can't find it guys, it's it's not available, it's few and far between. So we came up with a little bit of a solution and that's taking our single C13 to our 620P and buying an adapter. And that adapter is just a C14, which is the male end, which goes to the C13 directly in there and boom, then you have a double C13 and you can plug it in your unit and you can run it. So we're here in Blake's mining basement Shout out to my wife for allowing it to happen. It's nice, loud, and noisy. Uh, we have some L3 pluses, some S9s, a nice little KD box right here. He's the only guy that can actually run during this video without being too loud and interruptive. But I'm gonna plug this cord in. And once we get this plugged in, then we'll get into the unboxing of this beautiful unit, explain the firmware update a little bit, turn it on, get a little bit more of a review without being too repetitive. I know there's a lot of re review bit videos out there, but um, so bear with me while I plug this guy in. One, one thing I did want to illustrate with this cord is it is pretty long. This is an eight foot cord. That's the max that I would go guys. And what you'll find in a lot of these is that this adapter's 15, rated for 15 amps. Nick from Space Design Warehouse did a really good job on, his, on one of his last videos illustrating how to tell what you're gonna need for your electrical consumption in these units. Um, without further ado, we'll dive into this L7, get it unboxed, get it plugged in, and uh, show you a little bit about the firmware. So we did have it open. So it does smell brand new still, which is beautiful. And you know, get this nice user's manual, and you know what, nobody, nobody uses this. Nobody pays attention to it. I mean, <laughs> we should, we should, right? But we're gonna Google it and we're gonna find it on Reddit and we're gonna find all the information we can elsewhere. I'm gonna get this bad boy out. Now, as you can see guys, these units are packed really well. So if you're afraid of the international shipping process, Bitmain's done a pretty good job of keeping them secure throughout shipping. Now we've gotten boxes that have had jabs on the side of them that have had a lot of issues, but We've never had that hit a miner. And just to further elaborate on that a little bit more, we have had units that get scuffs, but that's due to the factory process. I, I don't think that's due to the shipping process. There's no indents on the units. There have been times, rare occasions, um, I won't name any names, but we have a poor client that watched a UPS driver take his unit, a 104, and throw it from top of the truck down to the bottom of the truck. That did cause damage, and we're working through that process, and I feel bad for that, and it's not funny, but there are always those guys that don't take care of these units, and, and commonly, uh, it's due to a, a lazy driver or something like that, but it is rare, and we hope it doesn't happen to you. It doesn't happen often. It has happened, but it doesn't happen often. So I'll continue with this guy. We'll get, some, get this rest of the styrofoam out of here. Get him unwrapped like a Christmas present. Now I will say too, guys, these are not ours. Shout out to our client for, for allowing us to do this nice, beautiful examination of his unit. We are testing it for him prior to sending it to him so that it will show up to him with updated firmware and his pool address input and 
when we run this test, it's all of the profits that we get during the video are gonna go to his address. So shout out to him. And I'm gonna plug this bad boy in. It's gonna get loud, guys. Here we go. Not too loud yet, so when these machines fire up, they're often pretty quiet, and it's gonna run a test cycle. It's gonna get to know what's what's going on, and it's gonna kick up, and it's gonna be nice and noisy, as you can hear. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use a program called BTC Tools, and BTC Tools only works for Windows, which is a shame, but it's super helpful because it picks up the units made by Bitmain really quickly. And so we can jump into our BTC Tools app and we'll leave a link for this program as well under the video. And we'll just hit scan and it's gonna pick up our little KD box as well. Um, I did say it was particular to Bitmain. I guess that isn't really correct. It will pick up other miners, but we've had really good luck with Bitmain. So as you can see, it says Antminer L7 and we just double click the IP address and it brings us right into the miner's user interface. And so, at this point, what I would be doing if this was a brand new unit, which it is, but we've already programmed it, we set it to our pool and we set it to our, our we set it to our username, and then let this thing run for approximately two to five minutes, and let it get get its uh, get its boots under itself. And once it starts rolling, then it can start mining and it'll show up on your miner interface. Now, as far as the firmware update goes, I don't know if you, can you see the computer at all? When we, when you want a firmware upgrade, it's a really straightforward process, guys. You literally just go to system and you go to firmware upgrade and you implement your firmware file here. Where do you get your firmware file? Bitmain's website right here, you download it. You save it, which as you can see, I have three of them already. I save it, go back to my minor interface, and simply put it back in there, open it, put it back in there, and update it. And it will automatically update, reboot, and go back to what you need it to. So it's a really straightforward process, nothing crazy. I would recommend it as soon as you get your L7 to do that. It will help with, based on our experience, your hw errors hey guys what's going on i had to jump in here for a second and let you know a little bit about what i'm talking about when i'm referring to hardware errors i actually went out and did a little bit of diligence and found some information that i think will be pretty useful we found out that the hardware errors are actually mainly due to voltage spikes increases and decreases in electricity that are sporadic and so when that happens you're going to have more hardware errors than normal an example of this would be if somebody used custom firmware on their operation and decided to lower the amount of voltage that went into their asic when that happens you're going to get more hardware errors and what we've seen with going back to the l7 it is a lot less likely that you'll have this crazy amount of hardware errors when you update the firmware so that could have impacted the voltage of the PSU, the firmware, the new firmware, or maybe we were getting faulty readings, we're not sure. But that's just a quick explanation of what hardware errors are and why they come to be. Credit for this information goes to CryptoMineCC. Check them out on Telegram. They develop uh, overclocking software for ASICs. So shout out to them and thank you for that piece of info. We'll drop a link to their Telegram group below. Now the recommended temperature range that you're gonna wanna keep these guys in is around 75 to no more than 100 degrees Celsius. Now, Bitmain's website lists a variety of different, what they call PCB max temps, and they're all in Celsius. I couldn't find the L7 on there, guys, and maybe I'm wrong, right? It's probably out there. If it is, please drop in our comment section. But to give you an understanding of what you wanna do, don't let it get too hot, but don't let it get too cold, right? Bitmain's products will actually shut off if they get too hot. That's the difference. One of the differences between What's Miner products and Bitmain's products, the What's Miners will actually just throttle down when they get too hot, whereas these will just shut off, right? Both just safety mechanisms. 
when you're running a very large amount of these things, such as what's miners, it's different because if you're not on site all the time, you'd rather it throttle down and still mine until you can get out there and reset it or help the temperature rather than just shut off, right? Regardless, if you're running these residentially, a lot of people are able to just hop out to their garage or wherever they're operating it and reset it. That can help adjust your inlet airflow, outlet airflow, everything to do with that. So without further ado, we'll give you a little bit of video of, of this bad boy in action. And if you guys have any questions, please shoot them onto our YouTube channel, uh, Twitter, Reddit, or Telegram, Musk Miners. After all that, that's a review. Happy mining, guys. Nick from Space Warehouse Design or any of our videos. Did I get it backwards again?